Okay, y'all, so we are just going to jump right into this one. I'm actually just using a concealer. This is a really full coverage concealer as my primer, and then I'm just going to use some of the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder to set it down. I'm using the Beauty Blender with that powder as well. And I just used one that is really close to my skin tone. I believe it is probably the lightest one, maybe in five, shade five, question mark. I believe so. And I just like to press that in and really get a good, nice, clean base for these shadows. So then I'm going in. This is the Morphe 350 palette with that like weird kind of green, olivey brown shade. It still looks really warm compared to the greens that we use later, but in this whole palette of warm tones, it looks really green which is why I wanted to use it. So I'm just gonna take a big fluffy brush. This is a really old fluffy Sigma brush and I'm gonna buff this out all over the place, really build it up, get it nice and pigmented in that crease as well. And then I was like, um, why aren't you closer to my face? So then I'm going in with this shade from NYX. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but it will be listed down below. And I'm taking this pointed brush. This is from Morphe and I'm just going to kind of poke that onto the outer corner and then start blending that into my crease. I really like this brush for the crease because that pointed part can really place color into the crease and then the shape that it is, it makes it so effortless to blend things out. So I just place that color right in the crease and then just kind of wiggle my brush around and it blends itself out very easily. It's amazing, I love this brush. So I'm just gonna go in and again, keep building up that color. The more that you build these colors, especially because I'm going for kind of a dark look anyway, it's going to look so good in the end. You're gonna thank yourself later. This is definitely one of those looks that looks so crazy when you're doing it and you think it's just such a hot mess and you look like you have like gangrene on your eyes or something or you got punched in the face but it all comes together at the end and you're gonna really thank yourself when it's very much blended and you took your time to really like buff these colors out. And I don't worry about having this color on my lid at all because we are going to pack a color onto the lid anyway. As long as it's blended up in that crease, everything below that is whatever, it doesn't matter. Then I just go back with no product on that fluffy brush and just kind of buff out the colors like right in between that brown and that green just to make sure that everything is seamless. When you're going for a very intense smoky look or any eye look really, the key is going to be blending. You can go back and forth with those colors as much as you want to get the look that you're going for. Then I am going to take this flat shader brush. I actually think this is some random no name concealer brush that I've had for years and I'm taking this dark green color from that NYX palette, one of the NYX single eyeshadows that I have, and I'm just gonna start packing this onto the lid. This is what's really going to like kick this look up a notch. I know that this green looks lighter than the other color that we put in the crease, and that's not normally what you would think for a smoky eye, but with a color like green or blue or purple, I want the most vibrant color. As you can see, compared to that other green that we put in our crease, it's a little bit more muted. It's like not as vibrant forest green as this green that we're putting on the lid. So it's going to make that lid color the standout green shade and it is the most color that you're going to see, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna pack on this green and then taking a mixture of that the first green and the second green, I'm going to kind of buff this really gently in the crease just to kind of blend it out so it's not a stark line or just very choppy and again this is one of those looks you're gonna go back and forth quite a bit you're gonna pack color on and blend it out you're gonna pack it on and blend it out with browns and shades like that it's a little bit easier to not have to blend as much but with blues and greens and purples it's really noticeable when stuff is patchy so you're just going to have to take your time be patient with yourself and really blend these colors out I'm also taking this little tiny blending Morphe brush and kind of blending in that inner corner just because the other fluffy brush is so big and I didn't want to get too out of hand you can also use a green base or even a black base to really make this green pop. I didn't do that today because I thought the colors were fine on their own, but definitely feel free to do that. So then I'm just gonna kind of clean up some of the powder and concealer and stuff that had fallen down, and I'm going to work on the face for now. So I'm going to use the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Pearl and put this pretty much all over my face with a damp beauty blender. 
I had already moisturized and everything and I just wanted to add even more glow because I'm using a very full coverage foundation and it's a little bit more on the dry side and I like to look dewy because I do already have very dry skin. So I just kind of pounced this all over my face. It's not really a primer, but it is going to add some more glow. Then I'm going in with the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation and I'm going to put that all over my face. It is super duper full coverage and for a girl like me who is as white as a ghost, they actually have a shade for me at the drugstore which I can definitely appreciate. So I'm about to basically white out my face with this which is really fun because all of my fake tan has worn off and I'm back to being a pale little lady. So great. Then I'm going to go ahead and use the Age Rewind to kind of conceal under my eyes and highlight my face. This is a time where you're going to kind of want to use a pretty high coverage found a pretty high coverage concealer at least under the eyes because when you're doing greens and blues and stuff, it can really accentuate any dark circles that you have happening. So you're going to really want to cover that up and make that under eye look flawless so that it looks like a beautiful green eye look, not like green smudges with dark circles, if that makes sense. So again, just blending that out with my concealer and then I didn't realize that my camera had died but I just used that Maybelline loose powder, I believe in the shade 5, to bake under the eyes and right here I am using the Wet n Wild Color Icon bronzer, air quotations, in the shade something about a cabana, I don't know, but it's literally the same tone as my skin. Like it is not a bronzer at all, but it does have this beautiful pearlescence to it. So I love using it to set any foundations that I have because the powder will make it last longer, but it has this beautiful glow to it. So it'll add a sheen to the skin and I love it so, so much. So then I'm going in with the e.l.f. contour palette in light to medium and I'm actually using a mixture of that light shade on the top right and the bronzer shade on the bottom left and I'm going to just bronze up my face. I know I haven't done my eyes or my eyebrows yet but I could not stand looking at myself just like completely blank pale face with like no shape or bronzer or anything. So I'm just going to do this really quick and then we are going to finish up the eyes. So then basically I'm just going to go in with all of the same shades from the top in the same order with just different size pencil brushes. So I'm first starting with this brown shade and you will see, even I was like, am I really going to blend this out this far? I felt like I was blending onto my cheek, but it is so worth it in the end. I really wanted to go for a super blown out green look and to do something like that, you really have to push the limits with your blending and just trust yourself. So I blow this out really far out and really far down and then I'm going to start going in with these greens. I even take that big fluffy brush from the beginning and kind of just smooth over the edges every now and then and just correcting the shape. As, right, as of right now, the shape on my right eye that I'm working on right now looks like it's going very like winged out and you're going to see me correct that with this brush that I'm using right now. I kind of use it on its side to bring that crease up higher, the green color in the crease, to give it a more rounded look than a cat eye look. I think that that personally looks better on me and for a look like this, since I don't use liner or anything like that, it just suits the eye look and my eye shape a lot better if it's kind of like this blown out circle of color rather than a winged out look. So take that into consideration when you're doing this look on yourself, what type of look you're going for, if you want a winged out shape, if you use winged liner, if you don't use winged liner, if you have round eyes, if you have almond shaped eyes, or just what look you're going for in general. It really depends how high you're going to bring certain colors in the crease. So I'm going to work on bringing that green color a little bit higher on that outer corner so it looks more rounded rather than more cat-like. With this look as well, since I do want it to be very blown out, I'm going to take that foresty green color and really push the boundaries on that as well. Normally, I would keep this color very close to my eye, but you will see me blow this out super far on that outer corner as well because I did want it to be a green smoky eye. I didn't want it to be a green lid with a brown crease. I wanted this to be a super blown out grungy green look with just a little bit of brown to help blow it out. So then I am taking the Milani Baked Bronzer and bronzing up my skin. I also did my brows off camera and I used the e.l.f. Duo in medium and my Brow Zoeva Brow Spectrum 
and my Zoeva Brow Spectrum Palette, just in case you're curious. So I'm going to just bronze up the skin, and I really do like this bronzer as well because it adds a good glow to the skin, and that is just pretty much what I'm all about. So... I really wanted to keep the skin very bronzy as well because orangey tones are really going to accentuate this look in a good way. So I'm going to go in with Apricot in the Middle Blush from Wet n Wild, their color icon blushes with that same brush. And I'm just keeping that bronzy vibe happening while adding a little bit of life to the skin. And again, this has a little bit of pearlescence to it, which just makes me so happy. So then I'm going in with the NYX Pigment in 07. It's this beautiful white gold. I thought it would accent this whole look very well and I wanted it to be really intense so I used a pigment to highlight my eyes and my face. That way it matches and everything kind of comes together cohesively with the colors but it also just uh, it looks so gorgeous. So I'm using that to highlight my inner corner and my brow bone and the rest of my face as well. And it's just so, so beautiful. I love it so much. Mm. Mm. Gorgeous right there. Gorgeous. And that's me telling my boyfriend to look at how beautiful this highlight is, even though he doesn't know anything about makeup and really doesn't care. So this is the look without a lash and with a lash as always. You can do whatever you want and I think it looks absolutely gorgeous with or without one. So whatever you feel comfortable with. I did just pop on a nude lip to keep it nice and simple and I did change my shirt so I didn't, you know, wasn't just wearing some t-shirt for this. So that is the final look. I hope that you loved it and I hope that you found it helpful in any way. If you want to see anything else, definitely let me know or any other colors that you want to see. I'd be more than happy to do that also. Leave your Halloween recommendations or requests down below as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. Everything that I used on or off camera will be listed in the description bar below, along with my Instagram and other cool links or anything that I mentioned in this video or anything that I want y'all to particularly look at, I guess. So I don't think I have anything else to say. So wherever you are, whatever you are doing, just have a good one.